So, you know, a lot of exciting stuff going on. And then um, I want to quickly segue over to boxing. Uh, there was a big fight this weekend, uh, Triple G and Canelo. I didn't order it because I had a feeling on how it was going to play out. I put a pr prediction vid out. And if you all want to make some money, you might, might have wanted to look at my prediction video because, you know, your boy know what he's talking about. Listen, if you think I've never took notes on your predictions and paid attention. <laughs> I see. I see how you do. I know. I, that's what I said about your show, man. It's, it's good because you, you know what you're talking about, and it shows. Yeah, yeah it's tough for real. Like, you know, like you know, I've been very busy, so I don't really get a chance to sit down and break down matchups like I used to. But I'm starting to get more time to do it. So I sat down and I broke down the Triple G Canelo third uh, fight matchup. I went through the footage for the first fight. Went through the footage for the second fight. Went through the punch stats. Went through type of type of punches thrown. When they were thrown, what combinations, how how many punches were land, the connect percentage, like all these different things. Um, who's the new trainers? You know, all these different things where I can say, okay, how is age going to be a factor? Um, how they've been in their last six fights? What's their strengths on speed, foot, um, foot speed, ring IQ, all those things. And my consensus was, and I'm a huge Triple G fan. My consensus was three things: the age. He's 40 now, and he showed some size, size of aging in his last fight. He got hurt to the body in the last fight before this Canelo fight. Um, his last six fights, he hasn't had the same caliber opponents as Canelo's had. And then third, he's got a new coach who has him fighting a different style of fighting than he ever has in his career. He's still a very good boxer. He was a silver medal Olympus. Uh, uh, but that's not his strength. His strength is walking you down and hurting you, being the boogeyman, being a menace. And that's the style of fighting that Abel Sanchez had him employing that went up to the point where he was 37, 38, and no. He will, he'll walk up, hunt you down, cut off the ring, set up set the jab, nasty uh -huh. power jab, pump that jab out, and then start working levels. Throw jab up high, bang, to the body. Throw jab up high, bang, lead hole. Like, he would just set you up, right? Whereas now, it's just like, he's trying to, like, be be pretty and just like flick out a little, you know, a probing jab and not throwing combinations. It's like, it's not going to get it done. No, nah, it's not. And, yeah. and that was why my prediction for the fight was Canelo by majority decision. Um, I, I, I predicted two out, two out of three judges would give it to Canelo. Maybe one might have it as a draw or something, but I was like, Canelo going to win by decision and he might actually stop him if Triple G does not... Um, go back to the way he previously fought. So the way the fight played out, um, Triple G just looked very tentative. He was not being very active with his jab. He looked tentative to let his hands go. And he really didn't start applying pressure until later in the fight. Canelo started wearing down because Canelo's, he's really a six to eight round fighter. And then right. the four rounds, he fights in spurts. He picks his spots. He conserves energy. And he kind of like, he gets by. But guys that really can, like, keep their the foot on the gas, like Dimitri Bivol, who was the bigger guy in the last fight, and he's hella active with a jab from hell, he never get him, gave him a chance to rest. And he wore him down, and Canelo was lucky he didn't get knocked out in that last fight when he started gassing in the later rounds. There's nothing yeah. worse in fighting than when your gas tank is empty and the other person has you in deep waters. Because that's oh, when yeah. you, get oh, the fatigue, man, for sure, man. you get the fatigue knockouts. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because you can't keep your hands yeah. up and you you might, you know, get like days ago and get clipped with a punch that shouldn't hurt you, but you don't see it coming. Right. Knocks yeah. you off guard. So yeah. that's the way this fight played out. Um, yeah. Ryan, what, what did you think about what you saw? I saw the replay of the fight, but Ryan, what, you, what did you think? What did you take away from it? Um, I actually saw the whole fight. Um, I did I did end up getting it. But, um, but yeah, it's pretty much it looked like pretty much what you said. Canelo started off hot. Like, he looked good in the beginning of the fight. He was dominating. Triple G looked older, you know, just by the way he was fighting. And then, next thing you know, you know, uh, Canelo wore down, and Triple G seemed like he picked it up a little bit. And, it, and actually, it wasn't a bad fight. It started to get good towards the end. But, you know, he Canelo wore down a bit. And I, I, was, I was waiting for it, but I thought Triple G might have been able to knock him out. But it was uh, – yeah, Canelo pretty much dominated that fight, though. And I can see why the judges picked him. Yeah, I, I had it – I think I had it 7-5 to five Canelo, but it was a convincing 7-5. to five. Oh, yeah. 
the, the rounds that Triple G won, he had one or two that were he clearly won, but the ones that Canelo won, they were clear in his favor. Oh, clear, clear. You know, yeah. So, you know, it is what it is. You know, in my in my opinion, Triple G is still one of the greatest middleweights of all time. Oh, um, for sure. He got, he got robbed in the first fight. The second fight, I had it a draw. He should not have lost that fight. They robbed him. They, I mean, they they should not have gave given Canelo the nine the second one. And then the third one, he waited till he got too old. I'm just like, all right, whatever, man. I mean, I didn't yeah. take what? much. One of my favorite things about boxing is is when you see guys that are are like they they're experienced they've been around for a minute it's like you know they they got last couple fights you know they're they're around getting that older age when you see like ex, like seasoned fighters get in the ring and how they like their game plan when you know as as they get older I mean is 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 a, that's a constant change that's something you got to have to constantly adjust or you get your your dick knocked in the dirt if you're not you know what I mean if you don't. You don't you make up for the things that you're lacking or the things that may change. You, maybe you're not as quick on the left hand. You know what I mean? It's little, little differences like that to see people adjust and, and to see two guys, you know, this is number three, the third time they fought to see guys fight three times and to see their strategies coming back the next time and, and how they adjusted and see, you know, to, to watch, like it, it's, it's impressive and it's, it's, it's overrated the preparation that, that and, and how people, like you said, like how you know, people manage to, to carry that, stamina and take breaks when necessary and 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 step up when you know at certain times and and back off when you know to know when to do that and to control a fight like that is 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 impressive man it's 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 something that's very overlooked because you know it's, it's like almost boxing's not looked at like football where it's like offense offensive strategy and all that stuff is, is is important going in not that it isn't in boxing but like to the to the 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 average you know viewer like it's not really like full on pain. It you know doesn't pay like attention to the stats and all that. Just to see two guys going at it, it's like that they overlook how much. Like like for instance, Mike Tyson's footwork, like his feet are right where they're supposed to be every time, bro. Like it, it's 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 unreal that man's balance and how quick he is to it, like and to, just to know where to be. It, it's crazy because I've I've never there's every I've seen every Tyson fight, you know I watched every one. Um, I was a huge Tyson fan. Like Tyson's probably one of my favorite, if not my favorite athlete of all time. I think just as a, as a personality and watching that man as a kid, just, I mean, just fucking knock motherfuckers out. Like, mm. bro, like that, that uppercut, bro, you catch that uppercut in 1989 dog. It's over. It's fucking over. Like, and, and to see like, you know, watching footage of him. And as I got older and understood boxing better and to see his footwork and, and this little, the slight little things, it's so cool to watch fighters get older and, and, and the experience that comes with it. And they fight wars as they get older. You know what I mean? Because it's like the other guys too, they get older too. I mean, you, your stamina builds, you may not, you may not be as quick and as young as you were, but you'll, you'll, the last 12 rounds now, whereas, you know, maybe a couple of years ago, you only made it eight before you got winded, but now you're like, you're seasoned, man. That's a, that's a huge thing. It's very cool to watch. It's, it's an overrated thing that people just don't, don't talk about enough, you know? Except yeah. for this podcast, though, this yeah, podcast yeah. right here talks yeah. about the you know, I mean the shit like that gets down down to it. That's why I love this show. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. You know what? As as a martial artist, it I I get so hyped watching fights because it's almost like um, listening to like classical music. Like I get real into like the the little subtleties, the instruments, the hi hats, the snares, like. All, all the things that people don't even pay attention to when they listen to a beat, right? That's Same that thing. rapper shit. That's that rapper shit. Yeah, yeah. Like, um, because I used to, I uh, came up playing piano and classical music, so like that's always. Oh no shit! I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. So I used. Oh, that's to cool, play. bro. Um, so I got, I really get like fascinated by the details, and the same thing with with boxing. I can tell how a fight's gonna go just by I start looking at the the boxer's feet from round one. Yep. And then I work my way up, no homo. And then I, <laughs> I, I can just tell by like how the footwork is. That's going to give me a good sense on where the fight's going to head. That's why you, you see guys like that Dimitri Bivol fight with Canelo, the one that just happened like a couple months ago. When I saw the feet, and that's one of my, my criticisms of Canelo. He's very, very good combination puncher, but his feet, though they're better, there's at times where he's walking forward like his feet are in cement, okay? And that's just something that is just always going to be there. You look at a guy like Manny Pacquiao, 
you look at uh Hall of Famer like Roy Jones Jr. And this is to play into your point. Manny Pacquiao started off as a one-handed boxer early in his career. He had the right hand and nothing else. He didn't have a jab. And eventually, Freddie Roach taught him to use both hands efficiently to the point where he had power in both hands and could throw it the right as well as the left. That helped him get past a Eric Morales, which he couldn't do at first. That helped him get past a Marcos Antonio Barrera. That helped him get past a Juan uh, Manuel Marquez in three of the, uh, the four fights because he finally was able to throw a competent jab. And that served him... That, that's why he was able to fight at such a high level till he was like 40 or 41 because he actually was technically sound. So even though this, the raw physical talent stayed with him till like 38, 39, when the physical talent started to fade off a little bit, he was still chipping guys up mm-hmm. that like at his age because <laughs> his box and IQ, crazy. Roy Jones Jr., when he got older, he made, one, the mistake of going up to heavyweight and then coming back down too quick. And then two, he did not have, he's a very good boxer, but he did not have great fundamentals in right. terms of like combination punching, uh, solid defense. So when his physical talents deteriorated, he started getting caught way, way more than he should have. Mm-hmm. That's true in his career versus a guy like a Manny Pacquiao or Bernard Hopkins, who was in the same, Bernard Hopkins was in the same class. Yep. In terms of like age range as sure was I mean, he went boxing at a high level for longer because he had the fundamentals down okay be the man so that's the difference those those little nuances those subtleties super important in boxing too super important in boxing if you can control the center line this goes not just for boxing but for i, I would say any martial arts and i i this is how i call the joshua and fury fight that's why i picked i mean Usyk. that's why i picked Usyk to win in the rematch because i said Unless Joshua can learn how to defend and control his center line, he's is he's not going to win, and it's going to get worse. Right. Now, fortunately, he did a better job at controlling that center line. But if you don't control the center line in boxing, the guys that can, they can be absolute fucking nightmares for you. Okay. Right. There's there's a big difference between doing a better job and doing it right. You know what I mean? Correct. Like, correct. Same same thing goes for chess. If you control the middle of the board in chess, you yeah. can be a menace. Right. Even if you don't know what you're doing, if you clock up the middle and have some semblance of cutting off angles, you're just going to be a nightmare for most people. Just Say, to, disrupting is, is key when it comes to shit like that, you know? Like, uh, right. Correct. You know, just stay in the way. Just stay in the way with your hands up. You'll be all right. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> stay in there with your hands up. You'll be all right, dude. You'll figure it out. <laughs> Get on your bicycle. Yep. <laughs> yep. Just put your hands up. You'll be cool, man. You'll be good. <laughs> you know what I mean? You might not win, but you'll be all right. Like, you'll be in the game. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So, you know, that, that was my thoughts on that that fight. And then the big one that just got signed, big news, Terrence Crawford is finally going to have that big matchup with Earl Spence Jr. for all four straps at welterweight, 147, undisputed. This is These are top dogs in their primes. This is the fights we wait for, these fights, okay? Um, when is this fight? This is, I believe it's November 19th. Don't quote me on that, but it's definitely in November. They, I'm, definitely gonna, I'm definitely going to check that out. That sounds, that, sounds, that sounds dope. That's a fight you need to check out. Whether you're, you're a casual boxing fan, whether you're not a boxing fan, or whether you're a hardcore doc, boxing fan, that's going to be one of those fights that are going to go down in the annals of time. See, that's but, the shit, that's the shit dog, I love. That's the shit I love. You know dogs, I mean? dogs with an AW. These guys are dogs. You know what I mean? Earl Spence coming there to just take your torso away, like body shot. He just trying to like beat on you until you give up. Crawford got a mean streak. You you catch him with some clean shots and he comes back and he says, I need my five pounds of flesh. So like these guys are meant for each other. Two contrasting cool. styles, but two top dogs. It's it's the fights where you don't have a guy that's too old or a guy that's too green or a guy that's right. he, coming off a loss. Or, no, there's no... No stipulations here. There's no catch here. That's it's what just, I was talking about earlier. Two seasoned yeah. guys, two guys that are on their game, that are at the top of their game. That's that's the that's the chess match. That that that's that's what that's what the sport's all about, man. Like, so Ryan, I'm gonna have a fight party for that, Ryan. Um, for for certain, that's one of the fights that I have. I'm going to circle on my my calendar. So, is it November nineteenth uh, for sure? I'll double check on it. My fashion, look it up right now. We running out of time, but let, let me look this up right now. Yeah, let me ask you a quick question since mm-hmm. you're talking about fighting. I, I came up with this the other day. And I don't know why. And I've been asking people 
what they thought. So who do you think would win in a fight? Dave Matthews or Ed Sheeran? Oh, man. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, I'll, I'll say it in a second. Yeah, they, they agree for a potential November 19th mega fight. All right. Uh, uh, I'll say this. So far, I've asked eight whew. people, and it's dead even. Four and four. Four Sheeran, and four Matthews. So, like, nobody's in the lead. So, it's you two are the tiebreaker. I'm, I'm going to go with I'm gonna go with Dave Matthews. Okay? Yeah, I was about to do the same. <laughs> yeah, because like, I, I agree. That's, that was my pick, too. I feel like, you know, Dave, Dave was like an old school 90s frat boy. Like, you know what I mean? Like, they were a frat. They were a college I band. Think if like, you give them, like, a... Um, like a PBR and just like a pep talk, I think he can do pretty, pretty decent. And don't get me wrong, Ed Sheeran's gonna show up. He gonna show up, yeah. But, but you ever hear, you ever hear that story about Jamie Foxx bringing him out at the Apollo? Ed Sheeran out the Apollo. You know what? That's that's for behind the scenes. That is it for this episode. Yes. We're gonna keep talking. Uh, thanks for tuning in. We'll catch y'all next time. Peace. Peace. Go birds. Mm-hmm.